Did you hear about the chimney sweeps? They, you know what they did? They brought in food to the chimneys, right? So my mother was very brave. She opened up a little store. She used to buy the food from the chimney sweeps, sell it in the ghetto. We had some food, and uh, the chimney sweeps had places where to do. And this is the way it was a little money. It was again, it was turning. If we had some, uh, as I said before, there were some valuables like dollars. There were some gold coins. I don't know how much, because when I left the ghetto for good, I didn't have a cent to my name. I didn't have a penny. It was sudden. There were days where they would take you in right next to the Torvach. There was like a room, a store, and tell you to undress. But there were days where you could just go in. And people smuggled in anything under the sun, anything they could lay their hands on. We lived in the apartments that where we existed actually, it was five men to about 16 people in the apartment that had to be fed. And those were all children, all women, actually. So if we wouldn't risk that to bring it in, it wouldn't be there. And I was fortunate. Two men out of those five did get caught smuggling in, and they got shot. They never returned. What would be a typical day for you as a young kid? Um, in the ghetto, yeah. Probably um, going to school, going to this trade school, for lack of a better term, or learned uh, woodworking and things like that, <clears throat> with some um, other subjects that were fairly mundane, but nothing, uh, nothing very um, uh, elaborate. But again, I was um, 12 years old, 13 years old, so that uh, um, whatever 12-year-olds should be familiar with. But um, other than that, um, I would get together with my friends, would play cards, play chess. Would, um, there was theater, I mean live theater. We find a place like a few families together in one small apartment. And everybody the same thing they find. We was with other families in the same place. We didn't have where to sleep. One was sleeping on the table. We were sleeping, I remember, in one bed. When we were sleeping, I, or my sister, my mother and father, like herring in a face. And my father over there started to work. When he was working, what was the work? He has to go out from the ghetto and to go in a place where over there it called Gendarmeria. And over there he was working like a shoemaker. When uh, we, I and my sister, and my mother, and my, uh, my other aunts and uncles, we was in ghetto. And the uncles also went out to work because uh, the women in this time they didn't work. Crowded, hard. Although the ghetto had a, a life, there was passive resistance. We had theater, we had schools, we had one of the largest libraries in town was a Jewish library, Strashun Bibliothek. Where was that? Do you remember? This was on, it's called Strashun Bibliothek, and it was on the same street we lived on. It was its original place. There was, uh, the ghetto area had also, um, there was a secular uh, high school. It was called the Real, Real Gymnasium. So we had schools, we well, had a hospital. Okay. The schools were forbidden, but we still had uh, schools. We had active theaters. 
So you went to school there? I went to school, school there for a short time. In which between. school did you go to then? There was no which. There were what? little okay. little enclaves with, okay. with instructions. There were teachers. They would take a group of kids to teach them.